everyone, my name is Chris Venter and today we're going to talk about getting into cryptocurrency. So everyone's talking about it. That's the historical chart. Actually, it's a seven day chart for Bitcoin. And when I started producing this video, I think Bitcoin was at about ten and a half thousand. Uh, and probably two or three days ago when I nearly finished recording it, it was at uh, nearly 19,000 and today it's back down to 13,500. So it certainly you know, can be quite volatile, um, but everyone's talking about it. You can't go into a taxi, you can't go into a lift at work or a work event without people talking about it. So it seems like the word is certainly getting out to a point where the general public are now becoming aware of it. Hence all the questions I keep getting asked. So quick overview of cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrencies are sometimes called virtual currencies and they're basically a medium of exchange and they use advanced cryptography to secure and manage and verify the transactions. And there's lots of different types of cryptocurrencies. The original was one called Bitcoin, or the original mainstream one, should we say. And it was developed by a guy called Satoshi Nakamoto in about 2009, although no one really knows who he is. And since then, numerous other variants of cryptocurrencies have been created. And most of them, when they're not talking about Bitcoin, are talking about what's called altcoins or alternative coins. So at the time of writing, which I think was on the 4th of the 12th, 2017, there were about 1,324 different currencies listed on CoinMarketCap. So we'll do look at some of these links later, but that's a site you'll spend uh, a lot of time on and often can be a great mood indicator when you start looking at that. So the original main screen cryptocurrency, as I said, was developed by Satoshi Nakamoto and uh, you know, it's called BTC when it's listed on an exchange. And since then, there have been, as I said, 1,324 new coins created on top of that. Bitcoin certainly has the mar largest market capitalization, and it's worth over 56% of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization, which you know, has varied anywhere between 350 and 420 billion over the last few days. The next biggest is something called Ethereum. And Ethereum is known on the exchanges as Ether. And Ether Ethereum was invented by a guy called um, Vitalik Buterin in 2013. And it's based on an open source version of the blockchain. And it's kind of like Bitcoin, but it allows you to have things called smart contracts where you can execute pieces of code as part of a contract. So I can say, when a certain thing happens, send a piece of ether to two different parties involved in a contract. And the smarts in that allow you all kinds of different uses. So a lot of the altcoins that you see out of there, those 1,324 coins, are built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So it's kind of like a platform that enables other cryptocurrencies to be traded. Ethereum is open source uh, and it's the underlying platform, as I said, behind many of what we call token-based cryptocurrencies currently trading out there. So if you're interested in how Bitcoin works, uh, what the blockchain technology is that underpins Bitcoin and Ethereum, I wrote a simple to understand, you know, but very detailed article on this um, a while ago. And, you know, once you read this, you'll certainly be king of the dinner table. And what I try and do is explain it in simple terms, how trade and exchange works and then how things like a blockchain make that better. I'll pop it open quickly for you and you can have a bit of a look. So here it is here. It's on something called Blue Notes and it's called Everything You'll Ever Need to Know About Blockchain and More. And here we talk about banks, how you transfer money traditionally, um, what a distributed ledger is, um, how the cryptography process works, how Bitcoin mining works. So a really good detailed explanation of, um, of what goes on inside um, of, uh, of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and blockchain. So a little bit more about Bitcoin. So the first coin was mined on the 3rd of January in 2009. About 1,800 Bitcoin are mined every single day. And what's interesting is that, you know, every single Bitcoin transaction takes about 300 kilowatts of electricity to mine. 
and that's enough to boil 36,000 kettles full of water every day. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, what is this thing? People can just create more, it's digital. Well, it can't. It's built into the code of Bitcoin and the way it works with mining and the fact that the problem of mining gets more difficult all the time means only 21 million Bitcoin will ever only exist. And that's part of what makes it valuable. As um, people get more Bitcoin and more Bitcoins mined, there's less of it and therefore it becomes more valuable. Each Bitcoin is divided into 100 million units and each of those units is called a Satoshi. So one unit is a Satoshi, one unit is 0 0.000000001 Bitcoin. Um, and right now, 10 Satoshis is roughly 0 0.000001 Australian dollars. Something that most people don't know, or a lot of people don't know when they start out is, you don't need to buy a whole Bitcoin. So currently the price of Bitcoin in Australia is roughly nineteen dollars or $20,000, depending on what minute of the day you're looking at it. And you don't have to spend that much to buy a whole one. You can buy 0 0.001 of a Bitcoin. You can buy 0 0.5 of a Bitcoin. You can buy one millionth of a Bitcoin. So it's up to you. The exchanges allow it for that to occur. Um, so Bitcoin cost a dollar, US dollars in February 2011. And this afternoon I looked at it and it was about 13,500 US dollars. So being a phenomenal growth. The Bitcoin code is also open source. So what that means is, is the software that underpins Bitcoin is freely available for anyone to look at and audit. You can go to GitHub in the link that I've got below. You can actually download a copy of the Bitcoin source yourself. And what that means is that openness means all the different people looking at it, we can be sure that there's no bad code in there or there's nothing dodgy going on in there and it makes it much more trustworthy as an overall solution.